And since 1932, and with the U.S. approval, a tiny oligarchy of coffee plantation owners ruled El Salvador. And just like in Nicaragua under uh, Sandino, Agustin Faribundo Martí uh, in El Salvador is going to lead a rebellion that resulted in a U.S.-backed massacre known as La Matanza, where some 300,000 native peoples uh, known as uh, Pipil died. Um, but uh, let me backtrack. I just jumped. I just realized I jumped to El Salvador. I need to get back to Nicaragua. I forgot to finish with Nicaragua so that we can appreciate um, <clears throat> Nicaragua. Now, uh, students, you should be familiar by now with the policy pursued by the United States towards Central America in the 20th century. Now, Gonzalez in Harvest of Empire labeled the first part of his book Roots. And the film clip by John Pilger uh, gives us the visual evidence of those roots in Nicaragua. Now, Central Americans throughout the 20th century perished mostly at the hands of their own soldiers or from right-wing death squads uh, and invariably from weapons made in the United States. And these right-wing death squads uh, were um, uh, funded by the United States Congress. Now understand that the United States Congress has been providing Central American governments massive military aid to, to the side doing most of the killing. And as Gonzalez notes, between 1983 and 1990, under the Reagan and Bush administrations, the Immigration and Naturalization Service granted only 2.6% of political asylum requests from Salvadorans, 1.8% from Guatemalans, and 2% from Hondurans. Yet it granted 25.2% of those from Nicaragua, whose Sandinista government Washington was seeking to overthrow. So let's go back to the film clip and let's appreciate how the United States dismantles governments not to its liking. Uh, let's go back to the documentary by John Pilgrim. This is the remains of another Somoza interest after the Sandinistas had got through with it. A notorious blood factory known as the House of Dracula, to which poor Nicaraguans would sell their blood for as little as a dollar a liter in order to buy food. The blood would then be sold to the United States for 10 times that amount. The year was 1978, one year before the uprising. This was Samosa's National Guard, or Death Squad. Funded as part of America's foreign aid program, they were the instrument of American policy in Nicaragua for almost half a century. They were taught to equate all forms of social unrest with communist subversion. They were above the law, they could murder at will. Now reorganized in Honduras and paid by the CIA, they are described by President Reagan as freedom fighters. In 1972, an earthquake destroyed Managua and killed an estimated 10,000 people. The National Guard were quick to react. They diverted aid from abroad, they looted, and one officer reportedly tried to blow open the National Bank. In the center of Managua, this children's playground was built immediately after the fall of Somoza on the rubble of the earthquake. Somoza had repeatedly refused to build parks and playgrounds in much the same way that he resisted doing anything about the 83% malnutrition or diseases affecting young children. He did, however, find a million dollars to send in cash to President Nixon's re-election campaign in 1972. Nixon had said of Somoza, now that's the kind of anti-communist we like to see down there. When the earthquake struck, the return on this investment was beyond Somoza's wildest dreams. The United States gave him emergency aid of $57 million, most of it out of U.S. government funds. But the Nicaraguan Treasury reported receiving only $16 million. There was no inquiry about the missing $41 million. Indeed, more of the same just kept rolling in. With the support of the Carter administration, the International Monetary Fund gave Somoza $65 million. Just a few months before he fled the country and while he was bombing his own people. It's important to remember that we found a country in July 79 that 
had probably 40% of the infrastructure of the country destroyed by the war, and part of it destroyed by the earthquake in 1972, and some others didn't repair Okay, The city of Managua is a very good example of that. Then we found a country with no financial uh, resources. The Sandinista government nationalized 19 different banks and we found only 3.5 million dollars in the 19 banks. That means one day of imports for this country. On the other hand, we received we inherited an external debt of 1.6 billion dollars. And probably half, 800 million dollars, never were used in this country. Mm -hmm. were parked in Miami or Switzerland. Mm -hmm. However, we are now servicing this debt. In 1982, the World Bank congratulated Nicaragua for repaying the debts of Somoza, for generously treating the private sector with incentives, and for substantial progress in health and education. At the same time, the bank regretted having to cut back urgently needed loans to Nicaragua because of, to quote, increasing political limitations. In other words, pressure from Washington. We have been suffering in the last two years a sort of financial boycott. The private banks refused to lend to Nicaragua, the multilateral banks, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank have reduced close to 50% the loans to Nicaragua. And that means that we have a shortages of medicines, we have a shortage of food, we had the boycott of the wheat. Mm -hmm. Now we had the boycott of our sugar exports to the United States. Mm -hmm. We have a boycott of uh, some spare parts that are not coming on time for the crops. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's a scarcity of uh, foreign exchange that affects the industrial production, affects the agricultural production. And that affects the normal standard of living of the people. Still, they are happy under these conditions. Mm -hmm. And they are not easy conditions, they are appalling conditions many times. Check with the people if they prefer this life, very simple life, very austere life, to the life under Somoza. Yes. What is going here is that the people realize that this is their own economy, this is their own country, and they are facing an aggression, a foreign aggression. This revolution was not made by a proletariat party. It was produced by a popular insurrection. Everybody took part in the destruction of the dictatorship. This is not a political party. It's a front who made the revolution. And you have in this front different parties, the Socialist Party, the Christian Democratic Party, the Liberals, the Conservative, all of them took part in this insurrection. Mm -hmm. Christians, the same time with Marxists, took part in this insurrection. The church, many priests and nuns supported the insurrection, even fought in the insurrection. Yeah. Now, after four years, this is a country that has 60% of the GDP in the hands of the private sector, after four years of revolution. Yeah. This is a country in which the agrarian reform, instead of distributing land to the public enterprises, to the state enterprises, is distributing land to cooperatives and to private peasants. Okay, uh, thanks to John Pilger, who provided a timely documentary and critique of U.S. foreign policy under Reagan in Central America. Uh, ultimately, the Reagan administration uh, and, uh, with uh, Papa Bush, uh, the first George Bush, will eventually overthrow the Sandinista front. Um, now let's visit El Salvador.